All right, guys, welcome to the live stream. So today we're going to be, re be revisiting suspending objects in resin. So if you weren't here last week, uh, or even if you were and didn't stay till the end, uh, we were trying to uh, embed uh, a, a die, a dice, uh, in resin uh, for like a bottle stopper type thing. And we wanted to get it suspended right in the middle. Uh, last week I was trying something new. I thought that I could pour you know half of it wait till it skims over and then put the the you know the, the object in there uh, and then pour the second one and i was trying to do this really fast uh, and the reason for that is then you're guaranteed that it's going to be like one you know solid layer there's no questions about it unfortunately uh, we tried a dice which i think might work in that sense but uh, we were you know using a suspended object we we're gluing it to something hanging it in there and what ended up happening was it just became too much of a pain. Uh, for me, I don't have time to sit and wait for resin to set up to the perfect amount of, of hardness, firmness for, for you know, to, to embed objects. Uh, and the other issue was the other thing that we tried uh, embedding was a bolt. That's actually the thing that I was trying to place in there. And I found out that uh, there's really, there's either like a very short window or there's really no perfect time that you can actually get it in there without it fully sinking. So I scrapped that idea. That's just not a good way to do it, I don't think. Uh, I think you're gonna run into more problems. I know I'm gonna run into more problems than it's even worth. So uh, this week we're gonna revisit it and I'm just gonna do it the way that I normally do this stuff. Um, I don't have a lot of ex you know, experience doing this necessarily. However, I have done quite a few successfully just, uh, you know, suspending it letting the resin fully cure or not fully cure but just you know harden up and then coming back and, and pouring the second layer another thing that you know when you're, when you're planning to do something differently a new technique or something you know you plan it in your head and you can't really you know think about every possible scenario or what's what exactly is going to happen one thing that didn't uh that wasn't obvious to me in my head was originally especially on the dice we we hot glued a piece onto this this wire and kind of hung it there well the problem is getting it off if the resin hasn't fully set up it's really hard to get that thing off of the piece of die you know the die the dice uh, or the object uh, without it moving around uh, so overall that's why at the end i just said okay we're done with this this is not working uh, because I found out a few things that just don't make it very feasible or just make it extremely difficult and it's not worth messing with. Um, I've never really had any issues uh, with that, you know, the two layer effect on anything. I, I was just trying something new last week um, just to kind of see if you could nail it. You know, like I would say that it'd be more perfect, let's say, uh, if you could get it done the way I was trying last week. But I've never even run into any problems with it the way that I do it, where it, it hardens up fully. So I think the best way to do it, uh, if you're going to do multiple pours like this, let it harden. And I, was, I would actually recommend just putting it in the pressure pot if you have a pressure pot. Uh, you know, I use Alumalite for a lot of the stuff and it requires pressure to get rid of the air bubbles. So I think that you're going to have a bubble free, even if you're using a slower setting resin, uh, put it in the pressure pot if you have one, you'll get a bubble free casting for sure. And then wait until it's ready to be pulled out and then pour your second layer. But I would recommend doing it as soon as possible, you know, the earliest time that you can get it out of the pressure pot, you know, once it's hardened up. Uh, for Alumalite clear slow set, that would be, you know, like a couple hours, two hours for like a bottle stopper. Uh, for the regular set, you're looking at like a, an hour. Pull it out of the pressure pot and then pour your second one. So that's what we're going to do today. I'm just going to kind of walk you through how I do it. Um, and we're going to do it kind of cooking show style. We have things set up. So let me switch cameras real quick. I see the, the chat's going crazy. So I'll stop in a minute and kind of see what you guys are saying. But let's get to this view. So this was one that I made uh, after the show, uh, like the next day. And this thing is dead clear, absolutely perfect. Uh, the only problem, and this is another thing, it's good to do testing. I didn't really think about where, you know, how deep this was going. Um, it's real close to those threads. I think I actually drilled into the die uh, a little bit. So, you know, that's something to, to kind of recalculate on the next try. Uh, you'll probably want the dice up a little bit higher. Or, you know, I was just using a really small two-ounce cup. Um, you know, using a, a larger uh, mold 
will be easier to kind of get it right in the center, but not a big deal. Um, but this thing is ready to turn and I wanted to kind of quickly, I'm not gonna go through and do the whole thing, but I wanted to kind of quickly turn this if we have time at the end of the, the show tonight. So we got one that's finished uh, and I actually did a bolt as well. Same thing, dead, clear, it looks fabulous. It's perfectly suspended right in the middle. Um, and I think this one was made with liquid diamonds. I'd have to go back and, and double check. One of them was alumilite, one of them was uh, liquid diamonds. Both were pressurized. Turned out great. Now this compares to the one that we did. Uh, I had to scrap the bolt, it just didn't work. But this one, it actually has bubbles. Uh, and you know, part of the reason might have been because I kind of waited a little bit too long to pour in the first layer. Um, I mixed it up before the show and it probably was a little bit uh, you know, a little bit longer than I would have waited normally, but still, this is why I use pressure for everything because I don't want to have little bubbles <laughs> in my blanks. And pressure is, you know, the easiest way to ensure that you don't get that. So uh, let's see here. Let's stop real quick. I'm going to switch to this view, see what everybody's doing here. We got Mike. Mike's here. How's it going, man? Doing good. Doing good. Christine is here from Sweden. Welcome. Jamie Page is here. Dude, we got our entire trip planned. I am so stoked for Maker Central. And actually, I even have a link. Uh, make sure if you are in the area, May, uh, what is it, 11th and 12th, I'm pretty sure, uh, at, in, in Birmingham, England, at the NEC, uh, Maker Central is happening. There's going to be tons and tons of people. There's a link for you guys if you want to go get the tickets and see who's you know going to be there, see what's all going on. Uh, check that out, makercentral.co.uk. Uh, let's see, Anna's here. How's it going? We were chatting. I, I'm, I'm waiting to see what you make. Uh, we were kind of chatting the other day. Robert's here. Well, I'm glad you could stop in and say hi. No big deal. There's going to, this one, I didn't post the other one as, as a replay because I didn't want people to get confused. Um, at the end of it, I, I, I don't know. I'm, I, I'm kind of, I, you could go both ways and say, well, it's good to show like failures. I don't know if it was a failure. It was just a test that didn't go the way that I wanted and I learned stuff. But I don't think that I set it up that way very well. And if people just skim through it, they might try and do it the same way. And I just didn't really want to put up bad information. I'd rather just put this one up and show people how I think that you are going to get the best results. So sorry if you didn't, uh, if you didn't make it last week and wanted to see it. It just, there, there was honestly, the other problem was it was a lot of sitting around. We didn't do much. So didn't post the replay on that. Jim's here. How's it going? And Jen, if you put something in and take it back out. Can it leave the effect of... Lines inside the blank. Um, yeah, I think it will. If it, it depends on how, if I'm understanding correctly, if it hardens up enough, I mean, that's, that's kind of the problem that I was having with the bolt. I was trying to push it down in there and it just wasn't gonna work. It, the, the resin was too hard to go around. And I think if you took something out, uh, you'd kind of have the same, it, it would be kind of a problem, I think, in most cases. It depends on exactly what you mean, but usually you will. Now, uh, if you're talking about what I'm, ta what I'm gonna do, uh, we're gonna pour a layer, we're, it's gonna harden up. It's gonna be, you know, like the demold time, uh, the time allotted that you need to put it in the pressure pot for it to get, you know, hard. Um, that's gonna pass, and then we're gonna pour more resin on it. Now, the key to this is if you wait, like if you can get it, as soon as possible after it's it's firmed up then pour more resin on it shouldn't really be too i think it's still going to be two layers but you're really not going to see a witness line uh, i've never seen that um, that's actually why i want to turn this example i just i can't there is no witness line that i can see uh, you can't tell where the layers were and i just want to make sure after we turn it that that's the same case now you can run into issues with, with uh, the resin adhering to that first layer, the second pour adhering to the first. If you waited like, you know, a week or something like that, or more than 24 hours, most people say you want to pour the second layer within 24 hours. And I think the reason for that is that first layer is still kind of at the initial stages of curing. And so if I just take it out of the pressure pot with, you know, a Lumalite clear slow set, after like two hours, pour another layer on, both those layers are really kind of curing together and you're gonna get good adhesion. But if you wait until it hardens fully, like fully cures like a week later, you really need to scuff the top, otherwise you, you can have adhesion issues because it's really two separate layers. So I just wanted to kind of cover that a little bit. 
Uh, let's see here. Kevin's here. Kevin was looking forward to this Higgs school. <laughs> Thanks, man. I'm glad you could make it to, to the session today. Uh, let's see here. Who else is here? Mike Schmitz is here. How's it going, man? Alejandro, how's it going? Lots of people. Cat crazy lady. <laughs> What's up? And, oh, it just moved around on me. I, I'm missing some of these. Sorry about that. Uh, wow, there's a lot of people here. Sean is here. How's it going? Okay, so, um, let's see. What did you say? Ouch, some, some of you care. Who is? I'm not sure what we're... I don't know what you're talking about. Can't afford. Oh, to the go to the. Oh, to the the Maker Central. That sucks. Uh, I know not everybody can make it. The good news is lots of us that are going. I mean, there's tons of YouTubers going, so you can pretty much guarantee that there's going to be live streaming going on from the event. Uh, all probably at all hours. Um, I'm going to be doing a couple, probably, let's say like one live stream from the event uh, where we're, I'll probably kind of walk around and show you guys what's going on. Um, we might get some, some live streamed footage, maybe on Instagram or something of maybe one of my demos. Uh, and then I'm going to be posting as much as possible. And this time, I, I, one thing that I'm really terrible at, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not a very good like travel vlogger kind of, you know, like, I'm not good at making videos of us going to these events. So this time we are really, both my wife and I are going to work on it. We're going to try and really kind of almost make it like a travel vlog type thing. Like, you know, show like the whole going and doing stuff and what we see and really try to document the, the, the journey. So I should have a, a video up after the fact uh, of kind of the experience. So if you can't make it, hopefully, you know, between like, like I said, live streams, people posting and then people's videos afterwards, hopefully you'll get a good idea of how it was. Uh, so you won't miss out too much. And you save money. <laughs> hey, Doug's here. What's up? Cool. Okay, so uh, enough talking. Um, one thing I'm going to do right now, um, I have, uh, let's see here. So I guess let's, let's do this first. Um, I, I made one, one batch. I poured a blank with Alumilite. And I, I, I did like the first half of it, right? And it's in the pressure pot. It's ready to be pulled out. We can pour the second layer. But I think what I'm going to do first is we're just going to pour a first layer. We're going to set up a blank kind of like we did this, like basically the same way that we did it last time. Um, I'm going to talk about a couple notes that uh, the differences between last time and this time that I, I think will make, uh, help make sure that you get a, a, like the best results possible um, that, I'm, that I've changed since, since last week. Um, so we'll kind of go through that. I'll try and get a camera in here and uh, we'll go for it. So let's, uh, let me get this camera over here set up. I think we'll do the hot gluing on this desk out here, uh, but we're going to do the pouring over on the casting area. So let me just get this camera set up real quick and we'll hot glue on. We're going to be doing, let's see here. We're doing a dice for this one. So again, this is assuming like from the start, this is where we're, we're starting to do this stuff. I have my dice, my die. Um, I have a little contraption that what I'm gonna do is hot glue the dice to this little, it's a piece of copper pi, uh, copper uh, wire. Um, you could use anything, this is just something I had. It was easy to bend. Uh, and then I just have a piece of wood with a hole in it that'll, that the, the wire fits in, it does is it's just gonna sit across the top of our mold and it'll hold it in place where I want it. Now I'm actually gonna shorten this up a little bit after, like I said, I made that one and after drilling in, uh, the drill bit for a bottle stopper might kind of run into that thing. So I'm gonna change the, the depth of this little contraption. That's another nice thing is it's super easy. I'm just gonna, I need to get some pliers I think though. I think that'll make things a little bit easier to get this where I want it. <clears throat> I'm going to do it under the camera over here. Let's see here. Where's the thing? There it is. I'm telling you guys, it's really weird that there's no music. I used to have music on the stream. Okay, so this is where it was, and I want to bend it like right around there. So I'm just going to take some needle nose real quick. Bend this over, make it a little bit shorter so that the die will sit up a little bit higher in that cup. Okay, no big deal there. 
pretty simple and then it just fits into the hole. Let me get on camera like that. And it'll be up a little bit higher now. Um, you, the, the issue is I'm still gonna use the same mold. Oops, kicking the camera. Uh, this is kind of a little bit small maybe, but it's just handy, uh, especially for kind of doing testing and stuff. Uh, but it just fits over the cup and it'll put our die kind of right in the middle where we want it. I think that should be pretty good. So I got my hot glue gun ready to go. I'm going to actually, I think we're going to move this out a little bit. I think we'll do it right here. How about that? Uh, okay, just wanted to make sure I was on the, on the right camera again. Uh. Okay, so how I do this is I'm going to hot put a little, just a dot of hot glue on, on the bottom of this, um, uh, this piece of wire. I'll try and, I don't know, I'll try and get a shot of this. Just a dot. You don't want that much. Just a dab. A little dab will do you. Try not to get too much of the stringiness. And then what I'm gonna do here is kind of have the bicycle thing hanging out there. It's kind of hard to get this on camera and do it all exactly how I want it, but that's, that'll, that's pretty good. You can kind of mess around with this. I, I would, let me, let me look at this. Yeah, that's actually pretty good. Um, if you mess up, it's easy to just take it off and redo it. Um, the hot glue doesn't really stick to either of these two extremely well, uh, but it does enough. It's not coming off of there, but it, it'll come apart pretty easy. So we got that thing set up. Now the game is, and this is something that I didn't do last week. The best thing to do, uh, last week we were messing around doing different stuff, and this thing actually ended up moving around, and that's not good. If you can see, here's the other blank. See how the dice is, or the die is kind of offset. It's definitely not centered in there. And that's because I was messing around and I didn't have things totally locked down. And I think that it's much better. You can look above this and get this thing dead centered. And it also helps, let's see if I can get the camera to do this correctly without too much problem. It really helps to come from the side it's kind of hard to look straight down and make sure that you're right centered. Um, it's just your eyes are kind of, no matter what you do, they're kind of not dead centered looking straight down. So what, what I find is a good way to do this is to, to get kind of eye level with that thing and turn it around and make sure that it's still centered no matter which direction this cup is facing, which this is looking pretty good, I think. Once you have that, then I recommend, I find this to be a lot better, is to hold it in place and hot glue this thing, your little bridge thing, hot glue that to the cup. Then, and, and you'll want to go back and just make sure that it didn't move around on you at all. Um, then at that point, like you're guaranteed this thing is centered. And you have a, a few minutes if you needed to make a couple of little adjustments or something. Um, you have a few minutes before that glue is going to, like, I don't know, solidify onto the cup. Uh, but that's looking pretty good, I think. All right. So I'm just going to get rid of the little excess there. But I'm going to put that kind of, let that harden up a little bit, cure, let's say. <clears throat> One thing that you want to avoid is if you get it perfect, quit messing with it. Just walk away from it for about, you know, two or three minutes. <laughs> Just the more you're moving it around and doing stuff, the, the more it can move on you. And you don't want that. Let's see here. While we're waiting for that to kind of harden up here. I'm just trying to read through. Looks like you guys are kind of just chatting with yourself cool brett how's it going man welcome to the stream <clears throat> okay so um, i'm just going to go with the lumalite clear slow set uh, for me again my choice for resin is usually going to be a faster setting one for most things that i do i just don't really like waiting around <laughs> for things um, you know you could use any resin it's for, for this type of thing any clear resin um, 
if you're using a slower setting resin, typically those things are gonna have to stay in the pressure pot if you're using pressure for like nine hours. Now, you may not have to wait that long. If you're not using pressure and a slower setting resin, you may not have to wait nine hours before you can pull it out, but you definitely wanna wait for that resin to like harden up so that you can get that, that glue off of that dice. Um, it just, you know, pulling it out, if it hasn't really set up and, and adhered to that dice, you can move it around. So for me, it's easy. It's just Alumalite clear slow set. Two hours in the pressure pot. I know that it's hardened. There's no question. Pop it out of there and you can, you know, take off that, that thing. It usually kind of comes off of the dice. The glue doesn't really stick to it too much. If you have any problems, you can just kind of, you know, use your fingernail and just, you know, kind of rip off any excess pieces on there. But... Uh, yeah, time is money. I well, it's two things. Time is kind of money. Uh, there's, I mean, there's two ways to look at the the resin thing. I know there's a lot of people who, um, you know, their their argument for using a slow setting resin is that they can, you know, slam like a hundred blanks together and then put it in the pressure pot, right? My problem with that is if you're doing color swirl blanks, you have to wait until the end of the working time. So it's not like you can really make a hundred blanks that way. It's it's setting up on you. So you have kind of limited time to work with it regardless of the resin, uh, the working time. So I'd rather just use one that's faster, do smaller batches and get them out quicker. But if you're doing things like a bunch of clear castings, you can you know batch out a lot of them if you have 45 minutes of working time. So it, it just kind of depends on what you're doing. But most things that I do, I tend to, I don't really like making 100 blanks because if you screw something up, you just screwed up 100 blanks. Whereas if I screw up a six blank pour, oh well, throw it away and move on, you know, <laughs> do something else the next hour. So ah, that's just my kind of thing. All right, so we got this thing. It is nice and set up, so we can just put that aside. Let's switch to the casting view. I'm going to make sure that I'm on top of my camera views today. Uh, everything's a little bit easier when I'm set up standing, you know, this way and all that. I'm just, I, I'm a little bit more in control of stuff, so we shouldn't have any more problems with that. So here's our little, our little guy. It's, it's set. It's in the middle. Everything's good. Um, all you need to do is just kind of, you know, you don't need to fill the whole cup. Um, and you definitely don't want to pour it up to the, where the glue thing is. So you only want to cover the dice. Or, the, or whatever the object is, like halfway, something like that. So I'm going to just mix up. Um, I want to say that this little cup thing, I think it's somewhere like around hmm, maybe 100, 120 grams total, something like that. So I think I'm just going to mix up 60. That should be good enough. Uh, 60 grams total. Oh, excuse me. Um, and then, um, yeah. So for Alumalite Clear, uh, that's going to be one to one by weight. So that's 30 grams of part A, 30 grams of part B. Super simple. Uh, let's see, let's get this camera kind of this way for now. So I've zeroed my scale out. Get my Alumalite here. Add 30 grams of part A. I think I'm... Mm, I'm just gonna mix 40, uh, just cause I'm, I honestly don't know how much resin that whole cup will take. And I really don't wanna be short. So I'm just gonna mix up 80 total. So 40 grams of part A. It's gonna be a waste of some resin, but that's okay. I'm okay with that. Went a little bit over, so I'm actually gonna remove some of that. Just want 40. Okay, and actually for Alumalite Clear, and I stress, this is for Alumalite Clear only. This does not work with epoxies. I recommend adding a little extra part B to your mixture. It just tends to be clearer in the end. Um, and again, it only works for Alumalite Clear. You don't want to do this with liquid diamonds or any other epoxy. Um, epoxies don't work the same as polyurethanes. Um, it just helps ensure, t you know, very clear mixture. Um, what can happen is with, with polyurethane resins, if it's a little part A heavy for some reason in the end, um, it can have some kind of like haziness to it. 
which doesn't matter if you're adding a bunch of colors and stuff to it, but if you're doing dead clear, I, like I said, I recommend putting a little bit extra. So I'm actually just going to go 40 and then 41 grams of part B. So 40 grams part A, 41 grams part B. Again, alumalite clear only. Uh, this does not work with epoxy. Um, but it, it will not, you know, do any, there's not, it's not going to screw up your ratio or do anything wrong with your blanks. It's just going to ensure, you know, as clear a po as possible, uh, your blanks. <laughs> English, use it. It'll just ensure that your blanks, the, you know, the resin comes out dead clear. It's never failed me so far. So 41 is what we're going for. But I, I, I have to stress that that's, that does not it's not the case for epoxies, and that's one of the reasons why I've, I had some issues with liquid diamonds, uh, because I was using it like it was, I'm, I'm thinking, oh, I'll just add a little bit extra hardener <laughs> for that clarity thing, and that it doesn't work the same way. Um, extra hardener with, with epoxy actually makes it softer, which is completely counterintuitive, but that's how it works. All right, so we got our extra part B. I went, actually, I went a little bit over, so I'm just going to just... Uh, dot of part a just to get it where i wanted all right so uh, so what's everybody up to today uh gretchen and i went for a bike ride up in tahoe last uh, uh yesterday on our day off and it was fabulous it was cool i went snowboarding tuesday up in tahoe and it was a pretty good day and i went bike riding up in tahoe on thursday how cool is that if you're ever up in the area i swear Tahoe is the gem of the Northwest area. This is, it's the best place on earth. I would actually say it's one of the best places in America. So if you're in the area, definitely stop in, check it out. The lake is awesome. It's pristine. If you ski or snowboard, definitely come in the winter. Pretty cool stuff. Lots of, lots of outdoor, <clears throat> excuse me, outdoor activities to do up here. All right, so I've mixed this up, scraping the edge and the bottom and everything on the cup. It is well mixed. There's no more little hazy trails of anything. Which tells me that my mixture is good to go. And let's get this camera in here so we get a good shot of the pour. Uh, that's pretty good, pretty good. Okay, and it's nothing to it at this point. You just pour it. Uh, you want to pour it to the bottom of your mold. Let it sneak up. Let's let me let me see if I can actually get this camera. Don't look at the camera for a second, guys. Try and get this on the same level so you can kind of watch this being really watch this being poured. There, that's a much better view, huh? Oh, wrong way. There we go. Centered. Everything's good. Now, actually, I need to get down to eye levels so I can see where this is going to. Like I said, we just want to cover about half of this, this die. Oh, I'm pouring it on the wood. I'll add a little bit more. That, that would be fine, but I'm just going to add just a tad bit more just to make sure we're good to go and that's all there is to it at this point i'm going to put it in the pressure pot so let's pop the pressure pot open i'm going to move the camera up so don't watch it right now so you can watch it go into the pressure pot nothing to it we're going to pressurize it at 70 psi uh, i use ca technologies pots they can go up to 80 so 70s well within the the limits. I'm actually going to put something under this real quick. Um, I think I'm just going to put it on this. It's good to put stuff. Uh, I don't think it's going to hurt it, but I, I'd rather just put this on a, a, a flat surface. So we'll just put it on our little caddy, put that down in the pressure pot and add a little bit of pressure. We're good to go.
<clears throat> so we had a little bit of resin left. I think my initial estimate probably would have been pretty good, but like I said, I just wanted to make sure. Now I could do something with that if I wanted, but whatever. I'm not going to worry about it. Okay, we're at 70 PSI now. What I'm going to do, like I said, that's Alumalite Clear Slow Set. I'm going to leave this in the pressure pot. I'm actually going to start my clock right now. Uh, we're going to leave it in there for two hours. That should be more than enough to get it to, to harden up and we'll be able to open the pressure pot. It'll be ready. Um, and then after that two hours has elapsed, I'm going to pull it out and I'm going to pour the rest of the clear resin on top of that and it's going to be good to go. Again, you're, you're going to have to pressurize it again with, with the Lumalite, but um, I think this is the quickest and easiest way to get something, like I said, suspended. You know, you're going to, you, you want to cover it about halfway so that when the resin hardens, it's stuck in place, pop off whatever you had to, you know, holding it in place, get rid of all that, you know, stuff, and then pour your resin back in as soon as you can pull it out of the pressure pot and you're good to go. Now, if you're not using uh, pressure, uh, you can, you know, you're, you're going to want to stir slowly, make sure you don't introduce bubbles into the mix. Um, you may not have to wait like the full demold time, uh, which for like liquid diamonds, that'd be nine hours. Uh, you can pour it as soon as it's hardened up enough to where, you know, you can get those, the rest of that stuff off of your dice, you know, that was holding it in place without moving that stuff. So it needs to be pretty firm, but you probably don't need to wait an entire demold time. Uh, but, you know, it's, I don't know how long that's going to be. You'll, you'll have to kind of, you know, you, better to, to err on the side of caution, I would say. Uh, but, you know, after some, a few tests, you should be able to figure out with whatever resin you're using, how long you need to wait, again, if you're not using pressure. Um, but uh, easy to do. I mean, there's not much to it. You just hold it in place, cover it halfway, remove that stuff that was holding it there, and then pour a second layer on and you're good. Now, if for some reason you don't get to do that second pour, uh, you know, within the first 24 hours, I'd highly recommend trying to scuff up as much of that first, the top of the first layer, uh, where that second pour is going to contact it. Scuff it up with some 80 grip sandpaper, something uh, that, that'll give it something to, to kind of grab into. What can happen is that first layer, if it gets, you know, super hard and super glossy, uh, your resin isn't going to want to stick to a glossy surface. Uh, it, it only, it's not like it's going to chemically bond to, to, to the, the, the first pour. It's a mechanical bond only at that point, and you need to, you know, scuff it up, give it some tooth to bite into. Now, if you're doing it, the reason I say to do it really quick is because you're going to catch it while it's still in the initial stages of curing, and both of those layers are going to cure together. Uh, within the first 24 hours, you shouldn't really need to scuff it up. You could if you want, but you really shouldn't need to. So, uh, we did that. That was the first step, right? So now what I'm going to do in this pressure pot, I've already done, and it was one of the bolts. Um, we're going to pull this one out and we're going to pour the second layer. So it's been about two hours. It's been a little bit longer than that, but um, no, let's just assume that it was two hours later. This thing's ready to be pulled out. I'm going to put you guys on mute real quick because this is going to be loud when I crack this open. And we're going to do a second pour kind of, it's kind of like the cooking show. They're like, oh, look, and the pie's done, right? That's what we're going to do. So, um, so let me put you on mute crack this pressure pot and we'll do a second pour as if two hours has just passed. All right, so Edge Every Day, you're asking if you can make a silicone mold to hold it in place. I'm sure there's, there's lots of other ways that you can do this. Uh, whatever method you can come up with to hold something, the, the idea is you need to hold it in place. For me, it's pretty easy just to kind of hot glue something, you know, to, to kind of get it where I want it. It's just the easiest thing. 
Uh, but if you had, if you were going to make a lot of the same things, um, there probably are different ways that you could maybe use like a silicone mold or something uh, to, to hold it in place and maybe make the process a little bit easier. Um, offhand, I can't think how that would actually work and not be any like and, and be a whole lot better uh, than than this method. I guess it depends like if you were making like for a silicone mold, what I would probably be thinking is that when it's done, it's like the finished thing rather than a blank. Um, you know, in that case, you know, yeah, that, that would be, I just, I can't think of a, how a silicone mold would be able to hold it in place and the resin go all the way around it. So I'm not sure if that's what you're talking about or not, but um, there are lots of different ways that you could do this. All right, so, oh no. <laughs> oh, that sucks. My bolt fell off the glue. The bolt fell off and it sunk. Oh, well, that didn't work, guys. So this is something else that can happen. Make sure you've put enough glue on. Uh, one thing about this that, that might have been a problem is the, the bolt might have had some sort of like oils or something on it. Um, it might actually, that's a, another thing to, to bring up, is it might be a good idea to kind of just hit, you know, whatever you're going to be gluing together, or even the whole thing, uh, hit it with some denatured alcohol, uh, just to make sure that, you know, there's the hot glue will stick. So, oh well, these bolts are kind of silly anyway. Let's just assume, let's act like the bolt didn't fall down to the bottom, <laughs> and, and we'll uh, just pour the second layer on this. Um, so just use your imagination, guys. Use your imagination. So if the bolt was still in the right place, this is hard now. Still a little bit kind of soft. Like I can kind of, you know, you can dent it a little bit with your fingernail, uh, but it's hardened up fully. And if it didn't, if the glue didn't come off of that, that bolt, it, it would have been in place and everything would have been good. Um, but, so we just need to top off the rest of this thing. Now, I, actually, <laughs> This would almost work, the, the excess that we had, but I think it's best to just make another batch and go for it. Luckily, the bolt, I would much rather have the, the, the dice make it, and, and I don't really care too much about this bolt. It's not that spectacular of a blank. Um, kind of a waste of resin doing this, but that's okay, because I'm not going to turn it or anything. So I'm not sure, let's, let's just assume uh, maybe like, I don't know, I'm just gonna mix up like 40 grams of resin. I think that ought to do it. Let's just do 50 just to make sure. So 25, oh, I went over, oopsie. 25 grams of part A. Well, I'm just gonna do 26 and 27. It's more than I need, I think, but. Again, one extra one extra gram of that part B with Alumalite Clear. That'll that'll help you get clear results, clear skies, smooth sailing. Oh, I went over a little bit. Okay, so we'll mix it up. Luckily, we have a, a, a finished blank that turned out great. So, like I said, it's like a cooking show. This one's easy. You know, once you've removed all the little things that are holding it in place, then you're good to go. So, uh, lesson learned, you know, make sure whatever you're gluing to your little piece, you know, make sure it's, it's in place. I kind of did that really quick before the right you know when i got got to the shop and then i had a phone call to make so i wasn't really paying that much attention to it uh, pay more attention make sure that it's stuck on there and it's not going to fall and you'll be good to go so let's mix this up scraping the sides everything get all those part a's and part b's mixed together and then let's get this a little bit closer in And we just pour it right on top. And 
to fill it to the brim. And then you just go ahead and pressurize this guy again. Should only take about, you know, a couple hours or so. Um, longer is, you know, not going to hurt anything with, with the Lumalite, especially on that second round. <clears throat> but you do want to make sure that it's, it's, you know, hardened up. If you pull it too early, too soon, it'll, uh, you know, the, the air bubbles can come back if you, if you release the pressure too early. So you want to make sure you give it enough time, but faster the better on that second pour also. All right, and then second pour up to 70 PSI, and we're good to go. Let's see here. Jamie's out of here. Where do I get my clear PVC pipes? I get them from Flex PVC. And I'm going to close off this valve. That's good to go. Um, I'm going to put a link up here. Um, if you have questions about where I get you know, any of my supplies and stuff. Uh, pretty much all the casting stuff is on my tools I use page on my website. So it's a direct link to where I get the stuff. Um, and that's, they got a cool deal. The, the PVC, that Flex PVC place, um, I found a place before them that I was, that I used to get it from, um, that the problem was you had to order it in five foot lengths. That was the minimum length you could buy. Um, and so with this flex P PVC place, you can get any size, you know, three quarter, actually even smaller than that, um, up to like 12 inch diameter or maybe even more. Um, those are way expensive, the, the really wide ones, but you can get any, any size pipe and then you can literally, I think you can order an inch <laughs> at a time, like it's by inch. I don't really think there's any minimum. I haven't, I haven't hit a minimum yet, so it's pretty cool. Nice. Well, let's see here. Just want to make sure I'm not missing anything here. Lots of people here. Brain fizz here. How's it going? Set it centered, and then when it was cured, you could flip. Uh, yeah, I can't picture that in my head, but yeah, I mean, whatever way, as long as it's holding it in place, you know, yeah, there's, there's, I'm sure there's lots of ways to do it. Let's see here. I'm trying to, I'm trying to figure it out. Take the bolt out of the cup and turn it over. Yeah. I don't know. I can't tell what, <laughs> I can't tell what everybody's talking about. Sorry. It's, it's really hard to keep up. So, um, what we have now though, if you guys want to see one of these turned, I was, I got it ready. Uh, all we got to do is chuck it up. So do you guys want to see one of these dice? Uh, bottle stoppers turned. Yeah, do a video. That'll that'll help. Uh, let's see here. All right. Yeah. Okay. Bo wants to see it. That's all that. That's all that I needed. So let me go get this stuff set up here. We're gonna get the the stopper set up on the lathe. I'm gonna go get the cameras. And we'll do a quick turning. I don't. I, I got quite a bit of stuff to do after the show today, but I think we got time to turn this real quick. So let me let me move all the goodies over here while we get this thing set up on the lathe. I'm excited to see how this thing turns out. I think it'll be pretty cool. Uh, one thing that I want to do, I couldn't find it, but what I wanted was like the red transparent dice. Kind of like like more, I think that you see those like like the craps dice. So I want to see if I can find some of those. Somebody actually posted a pic on uh, on Facebook and, and mentioned where he got them uh, use, you know, using those. Kind of the same idea. So 
definitely want to try and get those, try that out, suspend them in a, probably like a stopper type thing. Lots of things you can do with suspending. I don't really do a lot of it because most of the products that I make, I try to make them so that you can kind of batch them out, but it'll be pretty cool. Vic Mark Chuck, nice. Sweet. All right, what am I doing here? Oh yeah, I need my cable. Let's do a little bit of turning. So who's excited for Maker Central? Man, that's gonna be so cool. We finally got all of our travel stuff fully taken care of at this point. So we are ready to rock. That is gonna be pretty cool. Although I have to be honest, I'm really not looking forward to that plane flight. <laughs> That's going to be horrible, but it'll be worth it. <clears throat> it's actually kind of a shame that it's only a couple days long the event. Okay, so let's see how we're doing here with our... There we go. Look at that. Missy's going sweet. What are we singing? I don't know what we're singing here. I don't sing, guys. <laughs> Sorry about that. This is not a singing channel. I don't even like karaoke. No singing nor dancing. If you see me singing and dancing, that means there's a lot of alcohol involved. <clears throat> All right, so we got this. I'm just gonna use this little rubber chucky uh, little bumper thing just to give it a little bit of support while I'm getting the outsides round and shaped. I think that that'll, I think that'll work fine. Those little rubber chucky things are kind of cool. And then it doesn't mar up the surface. All right, I think I'm just gonna use my little finisher. Uh, the mini, mini size, I think that they call this. It's not really that tiny. That's why I, I always for, don't want to call it mini because it's, but it's a really good size for like pens and bottle stoppers. I got a little mark on the side of my, <laughs> on the side of my headstock. So I know where, where center is. All right. So we got our, our tool rest set up. Let me get some glasses on here. A little wobbly, it'll be all right. Let me just make sure this thing is fully on there. Give it one more little crank. All right. Can you guys see? Not really. I'm gonna move the camera onto this side for, for, for now. And I'll move it back when we're doing other stuff. I just think that'll be a little bit more of a useful view. <clears throat> Look at them shavings fly. Oh, I think this one's actually the liquid diamonds. It has a, a unique smell. <clears throat> now for the shape of this because you, do, you don't want to cut into it I'm just going to kind of sort of teardrop shape I'm just going to kind of make a round on the top and just kind of cut down in but we're not doing a lot of shaping to it the, the object inside is really the, the whole point you know
I don't have my iPad, so I'm going to have to stop and look at the comments every once in a while. Move the camera in a little bit closer. I think you can. Not a whole lot to see right now, but. I think I'm gonna. Don't watch the. Don't watch the camera, guys. I'm gonna. I'm gonna extend the tripod a little bit. Just trying to get away with not having to do this. But I think it's oh this tripod's not as easy as my other one. Okay. Whew. That was exhausting. All right, here we go. Now you should be able to see a little bit better. While we're stopped, let's stop and check the, the chat, see if I'm missing anything here. Uh, it's actually, it's a 24. Um, I figured if I'm going to get one, I'm going to get the biggest because <laughs> I don't want to, I don't want to, you know, like the difference in price between the 18, I knew I wanted a full size. The difference in price between the 18 and the 24 isn't that much, but you know the the difference in in capacity. If I really wanted it, is kind of a big deal and power. So, I'm glad that I went with that one. Everyone, be quiet. <laughs> Did you know? Let's see. Uh, yeah, this is a, a negative rake cutter on this tool. Uh, this is the. CI3, which goes on there like the kind of regular, uh, let's see, this is the mini tool handle. But yeah, I love these negative rate cutters for, for resin projects. They are just, they make a big difference. Now, it's, I, got, I got perfectly fine results like with smaller things on like pens and stuff before. But on the bigger projects, man, you, it's so easy to get catches, even on spindles on the outside with the regular cutters and these things, I mean, literally you can turn one handed you're not going to get a catch. Um, and then the other thing was for me for hollowing stuff, man, I, I just, I hated it. I, I just avoided it. Basically. I didn't like it with resin. I always got catches and I definitely didn't want to hand hollow stuff at all. Uh, I even bought like one of those articulating arm things. Cause I just, I couldn't stand it. Um, just, it was so catchy that I found myself just tense the whole time I was turning it. It wasn't fun. <laughs> so, um, and then they came out with these things and man, it, it changed the game. Like I love hollowing by hand now. Um, actually one of my favorite tools that I didn't think I would even want is the number one hollower, the smallest circle cutter. This thing is awesome. It's so fun to hollow things. So I definitely, if you do a bunch of resin stuff, it, these don't help out with, with regular wood. You know, it, it's a, it's kind of made for resin and, and things that are catchy or brittle. Um, the other thing is if you got, if you're turning like really brittle, like polyester resin blanks that are really chippy or some of the other acrylics that are just really super brittle and, and tend to like chip a lot, um, they totally tame those kinds of resins. So I'm a big fan of these things. It was kind of a game changer for me.
trying to see how much room it looks like i got quite a bit more room left so like i said the, the biggest problem is you got to avoid cutting into the thing so i'm trying to make sure i don't do that i'm going to come in actually with the number one hollower try and get this bottom part equal what what i'm using here also uh, this uh, mandrel system is from stainless bottle stoppers and they have bushings. It's kind of like your pen kits, uh, but it's a system where for diff all the different kits, they have different bushings that you can put on. Uh, and this is the one for their bottle stoppers. Um, I love this thing. It's, it's really awesome. You don't have to even think about it with, you know, different stoppers and the handle type things, their honey dipper. There's just all kinds of different things that are not pens, like the slightly larger um, and they have a, a collar for, or, you know, bushing type thing for each one of them. And it just slides on and off. They got little washers that fit. It's, it's a great system. All right, so let's get this guy. Almost there. Just a little, little, little hair more. All right, that ought to do that. <clears throat> I'm gonna go back to the CI3. I think I'm gonna put my RZ mask on. I don't have my fan on. And I don't really wanna breathe this resin dust in my nose it's really not good for you so let's do that so who's excited uh the new avengers movie's coming out really soon i think isn't it i'm excited about it who else is excited i love a good action superhero movie All right, let's see what we're doing here. It's kind of a different shape. I've never done anything like this, but we got everything trued. Everything's trued up at this point. We got all the little ridges from that cup out for the most part. So now I just need to kind of smooth things out and I'm just going to try and take a little bit more off here and round it over. Um, before I do that, let's take a look. See what everybody's doing here. Iron Man doesn't die. Hmm. How do you know he's going to die? Are they making their own tools? I'm not sure who, what you're talking about.
you know, you don't have to use them. If you're getting perfectly good results without the negative rakes, then it's not a big deal. But I haven't, I haven't talked to anybody that got them that was like, oh, that was a terrible idea. <laughs> Everybody's like, wow, these are great. So, uh, you know, I think that it just, it, it has made turning a lot more enjoyable uh, for, like I said, especially for like hollowing the inside of things for me and then like larger blanks, they just, they work a lot better. I was using, you know, you can use negative rake uh, um, uh, high speed steel tools also, but I just find that you're sharpening more than you're turning with those. So I was very happy when they <laughs> came out with a carbide solution for that. Okay, so yeah, I don't know. So who's your favorite, uh, who's your favorite Avenger superhero? That's a really tough one. I gotta say, honestly, like, I'd say Black Widow is probably one of my top favorite because she really doesn't have any like superpowers. She just is super awesome, you know? It's kind of tough though, because I like all the other ones too. All right, let's continue on. I don't think this rubber chucky thing's really doing a whole lot. Okay, it's looking kind of cool. Kind of what I was going for a little bit there. Let's take the tail stock away and we'll just finish up rounding over that edge. You could leave it flat if you wanted. I think I want to go for round, see how that looks. Let's get in here. This side, there we go. Stop and see what you guys are doing in the chat. What's happening in the chat? Nobody puts pole in the corner. Oh, I see that my screen did something funny. Uh, we fixed it, don't worry guys. 
Good thing I saw that. Ooh. What's up, Gordon? How's it going? I have not ever personally cast any cremation stuff myself. Uh, I might be doing that down the road, though, soon. I'm just waiting for the guy to send it to me. <laughs> Be kind of a cool project be a little weird but at the same time kind of cool at the same time you know you know yeah i'm making a, a bottle stopper it could be a, a shift knob too either way you just have to put the right uh uh let's see here the, the right threads in there Let's see here. All right. Yeah, you could do a, a pour a color. You could uh, to hide the threads. I I'm not that worried about it on this. Um, some people get really bent out of shape if you can see the threads, and they're like, "You're not an artist. You suck." And I don't really understand that, but. Um, one thing that you could do is uh, that I've done is you, you just drill out a, a larger hole in, in the bottom there and then just, you know, back pour some, some like black or, you know, whatever resin you want. That's one way to do it. You could just pour a little bit and you know, make it like a three pour uh, type of blank, pour black in the bottom of your cup, you know, and then, and then pour the second layer uh, with your, you know, half going up half the die and then pour a third. So there's, there's different ways you can t take care of it. Um, you could maybe try to like, you know, glue, I don't know, pour resin into the thread area maybe. Uh, I think that I've found that it's easier just to kind of drill out a bigger hole and fill it kind of thing. But yeah, there's lots of ways. Or like, I don't really, pr I kind of like seeing the threads. Um, that's why I get kind of like, I don't really understand why people get so upset about <laughs> seeing them i think it's actually kind of cool that you see those threads i'm going to get the other tool rest um i get you know in those kind of cases it depends on what the you know what the end user if, if you're trying to sell it if the person doesn't want to see threads then obviously don't <laughs> don't do this um or you know if you're giving it away as a gift or if it's for yourself then what, whichever way you like i don't mind it personally i think it's fine seeing them threads i think it's just kind of cool it's like kind of seeing the inner workings of something you know i like that kind of thing There's a little bit of an air pocket on the top there. I'm going to try and just turn that away. We got some room. That's actually another thing to think about. You know, for a bottle stopper blank, it, depending on how big the object is, you really might be better off going with like a larger, you know, like a taller mold, like a PVC pipe. Um, that's just a little bit longer than than you need these little cups are pretty small they're like two inches or so uh, but you might be better off going with something that's you know that'll give you a little bit of extra room on the top and bottom uh, so that if there's any like surface things going on or you know whatever you can turn it away uh, and you know i i found out that you you need to move it up a little bit because you know your threads can can i'm i'm really pretty much i think i drilled into the, the bottom corner of that that die. So I think that, you know, a couple things to think about when you're doing these types of things. And it's always good to do kind of some testing first, you know. Um, a lot of people get kind of frustrated. They 
see, you know, somebody make something on YouTube or, you know, see a post or something. And overall, it's not really that hard to do. But if that's what you jump into and try first, you can't expect perfect results, you know, first time you try something. So I always, you know, just good to go into it. Maybe try and, you know, doing a little testing first. <clears throat> not expecting perfect results the first time and learning a couple things that you can do better the next the next uh, time you do it. All right, now this being liquid diamonds, I'm not sure if it's actually, <laughs> if I gave it enough time to uh, fully cure, actually. Um, liquid diamonds usually takes about seven days. So we might have some difficulty getting this thing polished where we want it. Got a little bit of a dip going on that I need to fix. Get off me, ribbons. There we go. All right. All right, <clears throat> I think that ought to be good. We can start sanding. Uh, and like I said, for, for all resins, you really want to wait till the full cure to give it like the final polish. Um, it's going to continue to harden up until that final cure. And if you try and sand and polish something up before it's fully hardened, reach the, the full hardness, it's not going to polish out very well. Uh, we shouldn't have any problems sanding this you know, it'll sand and do all that kind of stuff, but I don't think I'm going to even mess with uh, trying to polish it up because I, I only made this a couple days ago. I believe. I don't think it's been a week for sure. I think I'm going to start around 240 grit on this. Got a few tool marks and stuff. I wasn't that accurate and smooth on everything. So let's move the camera a little bit. See what's going on here. Get it in here. Oh, get off me cords. Ow, how that hurt. I'm okay. I'm okay. All right. Get above it. Turn the lathe down to about 300 RPMs. Maybe 400, 350. Somewhere around there. Starting with 240, I think. Yep. Oh, lost my piece. Lost my sandpaper. I hate it when that happens. Did I get that little air bubble thing out? Pretty close. We got a little bit more to take off on that. I kind of forgot. So we're going to come back in with the tool rest here. Take a couple more passes. It's just a little tiny. It was the top of the blank. A lot of times you'll get a little, you know, dent or two, a little bubble right on the top.
All right. Let's take another look at this. Now we're good. It was just a little tiny little, tiny little thing. But it wouldn't have sanded out. All right, I'm gonna stop. See what's happening in the chat. What are you guys doing? Uh, I would not recommend buying a Lumalite or any other resin from a, from Amazon. Um, you have no clue how long it's been sitting in a warehouse and it has a pretty short shelf life. So I would get it. I, I usually buy mine at Turntex. Um, Alumalite's a good source or uh, Turner's Warehouse is a good source. Um, but yeah, I wouldn't, I really wouldn't recommend. I just, and even some dealers, some like I wouldn't, I wouldn't buy uh, resins uh, from big box stores because you have no clue how long it was sitting on the shelf. I have links to where I get all of my stuff on my website on the tools I use page. If you're ever curious. Nope, slow it down, slow it down. Going too fast. Still going too fast. Okay. Everybody's favorite part, sanding. Sanding and polishing. Unfortunately, there's no easy way to get around sanding. You got to do, do a diligent job to get a nice polished up scratch-free surface on these things. What's everybody doing this weekend? Anybody got plans? Getting in the shop, making something cool? Doing any vacation-y kind of stuff? It's Easter this weekend, actually. Anybody got family plans? Things you're doing? I'm going to turn a fan on because this dust is just sitting in my face. You can wet sand and that'll kind of cut down sanding dust in your face, but I don't know. I usually just dry sand first until I get to the higher grits. But wet sanding is definitely a good idea.
Let's go see what you guys are doing this weekend. <clears throat> Clean your house from top to bottom. Oh, that's no fun. Staying inside out of the rain. Where are you at? Is it raining? Colorado Springs. There you go. That's nice. New lathe. Turn some more. Nice. Shooting some clays. Nice. That's cool. Nice, yeah, I want to see those projects. If you post them on, on Instagram, uh, I don't know how to say it. Ty's, Ty's ear. Wow, that's a tough one. <laughs> I'm just going to call you Ty. <laughs> I don't know how to say that name. But yeah, these dice things. You know, actually, one thing I want to do, I want to make a, speaking of gambling, I mean, I live in Nevada, so it kind of makes sense uh, to do things like this, but I want to make a bowl with, like, the, like a royal flush with playing cards in the in the rim. I think that would be pretty cool. Just haven't got around to it yet. Or dice, that'd be kind of cool too. All right. I think we're good on the 240 grit. We're going to move to 400. Now, one thing you can do to get around having to polish or, you know, first wait seven days and then and then polish the resin, um, you can you could put a CA finish on top and then you can kind of avoid having to wait. Um, I don't know if that's uh, there could be some drawbacks to that, maybe, but um, I probably wouldn't recommend doing that the first day after. The only issue I have is if, if the resin shrinks a little bit, that, that hard coat on the outside might crack. But, you know, it is one way to kind of get around having to wait. It helps to have a raking light when you're doing sanding so you can see all the, you know, fine scratches and things that are in there. Uh, the light that I usually use just blows it out on the camera though, so I'm just going to kind of wing it here, but definitely recommend having a light shining down so you can kind of 
get an idea of where you're at on each uh, phase of the sanding. It just helps so much. Okay. Now I'm going to wet sand with 750. So I can turn off the fan finally. 750 and then 1150, and then we'll be good to go. see in here it's kind of blown out on the oh this screen on my camera is just not very good because the picture's looking good on the computer it looks like I'm always impatient with this stuff. So I really got to focus and, you know, make sure that I spend enough time on each on each, uh, you know, uh, grit so that you get those previous grit scratches out. And the best thing to do is, when you think you're, you've done enough on that grit, is to dry it off and take a look at it. See if you can see any, any scratch marks that you missed. <clears throat> and it's looking like I definitely do have some scratches that are going up and down. Now, again, it's best to have a raking light so that you can see. It looks like there might actually be a witness line. I'm seeing a little line here. And that is extremely surprising to me. Huh. This was the liquid diamonds though. And that one waited, I basically waited overnight. So I'm actually kind of curious to see the difference between the alumalite and this liquid diamonds because it looks like there's a little bit of a witness line there. I don't know if I can actually even, uh, maybe if I get the camera in the right direction, which kind of sucks because I've never had this actually happen before. Uh, but I don't really, I usually use Alumalite, so I'm not sure. Let's see here. Let's see if I can get a shot of that. I don't know. It's, it's very minute. It doesn't, oh, there, yeah, you should be able to see it. 
right there, right around there. That looks like a witness line. We'll have to kind of see once we polish it up. And another thing that you might be able to do to, to get rid of that is um, put a CA finish on. But that's interesting, so that might not really work too well. That's kind of a bummer. Hmm. I don't know. That's, I'm pretty sure that's probably where I poured the resin to, so it's, I'm pretty sure that's a witness line. We'll have to see how this turns out when you get it fully polished. Because if that's the case, you don't want that, you know? And then at that point, I don't really know what to tell you guys because that kind of defeats the purpose. So I think what I would probably say, I don't think that that happens. I don't think that I'm going to see that on the Illumilite ones. However, I am going to test those out. Um, what I would probably say for, for these, these longer working time resins, you know, this was, I left this thing in, I basically just left it in overnight. Um, and so it, it had, you know, hardened pretty well. I would probably try to get it, you know, earlier um, and maybe not go with pressure possibly. I don't know. Does anybody have any ideas? Because... You don't want that. I don't really have a lot of experience doing these things. I've only, I've done a few. Um, I haven't done a whole lot of them, so I'm kind of learning a little bit as I go, but I, the ones that I have done, I don't think that I've seen a witness line on them like that. Okay, let's see how the scratches are looking now. It's definitely looking pretty sweet though. All right, I think, you can't see it from this side, but you can see it just barely at certain angles from this way. That's really weird. Not very cool. Let's see what you guys have to say about it. Hey, what's up, Yak? I just saw you. Heath Knuckles is here. What's up, dude? How's it going, man? Uh, yeah, uh, let's see. Who is it? Dave, I can see some posts, but it, there's a lot of things, and it's hard to kind of catch up. But I don't have a screen in front of me. <clears throat> Oh, dude, Nick's here. What's up, man? So many people. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I'm, I'm not sure. Like I said, this one, this one definitely was the liquid diamonds blank that I made. And I don't know. That's kind of an odd, uh, odd thing. I really, I haven't seen that. I don't think on any of the Illumilite ones. But I, like I said, I haven't really done a whole lot of this. So, frankly, I'm kind of at a loss. I don't know what, what you would need to do besides trying to get it even even sooner. Um, if you can kind of... Um, well, you know, one other thing that you could maybe try to do is... Uh, no, because it's still liquid. I'm worried about a heavier object. That's, that's the problem. But I think that the Illumilite ones, which I'll have to post maybe... Or it'll be kind of hard to post a picture. Might have to just kind of mention it on next week's stream. 
um, how that how that turns out. I don't know if I'll get, be able to get a picture or you know maybe a video of it posted, but I think a lot of people will be like, I don't know what you're talking about <laughs> unless you saw the, the stream. So I'll try and kind of do a little testing, see what happens with it. It might just go away once we get this polished up also. That's kind of, that's another option. Or it just may be something that you got to kind of deal with unless you can get the whole thing poured all at once. I don't know. I've definitely seen people embed stuff, though. Uh, one thing that I was thinking of is you could maybe, if you, at the, at the depending on what you're doing, if you did the first one like an opaque color, like black, and then the second one, you wouldn't see any line. You know, it's just, it'd be this just this clear. And maybe even just doing something with like, a tinted resin uh, where it's you know transparent but you've just added a little bit of orange or something like that i don't know i don't know it's much easier just to make hybrid blanks <laughs> Some of this stuff is kind of crazy. Uh, a lot of like the label blanks and like the watch part pen blanks. Good Lord. So many fiddly parts. I can't, that's that kind of stuff I can't do. I just don't have the patience for it. So I'm not sure how well I can get this polished up because I don't think the resin is fully cured. Uh, I don't know. I, I, let me look up when I, what day I actually poured this one. It's another good reason to keep a notebook. Um, but I'm going to try buffing it out. We'll see what we can get. But I personally, I don't think that, that having that line there, that, that ain't, that ain't going to do for me. Like if I was trying to sell one of these stoppers, I, don't, I really would not want that at all. So, yeah. you can definitely see it when you're hit, hitting the angle, like looking at it from this angle. There's definitely just a line there. Hmm. Bummer, man. Bummer. So, let's go over to the buffer. Let's see what we can do. Uh, another thing is you could maybe try putting a CA finish on top of that. That might make it go away, but I'm kind of thinking it won't. Thinking that if you get that, you're pretty much kind of hosed. You're either going to have to start over or just deal, like live with it kind of thing. All right. I'm going to go and check the... Check the chat, see what you guys are thinking. It's a lot easier with the iPad over there. Yeah, I, that's kind of what I was trying to do, uh, was cast it in, in a gel state. But the problem is, if it's too heavy, um, <laughs> there, the, what I ran into, there's two problems. If it's too heavy, it'll just sink. And if you've, like, held it in place with something, you can't get the thing off. So it's kind of like, eh, you're screwed either way type thing. One thing that you could do is just kind of stick it on the top the surface like if if it didn't need if it, if it was stable enough whatever you're putting in there uh, like a bolt on its side you know you could just stick it on like pour that layer of resin once it's gotten to like pretty firm but but still kind of a gel state then just stick it on top of that thing and then pour the rest like that wouldn't be too bad probably but i don't know kind of fiddly kind of fiddly We'll have to see how the Illumilite does, because I don't, I don't think that I've had that issue um, on the previous ones that I've done. Maybe I didn't notice it. 
I kind of find that hard to believe that I would not notice something like that, you know? So, um, however, I, I haven't done that where like, like where it was, a, I was selling a blank to a customer or a finished piece either. So I don't know. Always learning. There's always something to learn. Okay. So we got triple E first. Yeah, there's definitely a line. But not if you look at it from this side. That's so weird. There's still a few scratches in this, like it needs a little bit more work on the sanding, but I think it'll it'll work all right to kind of give us an idea. It's pretty clear. Just a few scratches that I missed here and there. And it'll show us what this is going to look like if we can see that line, which you definitely can. I'm also wondering if maybe if I turn this down a little bit thinner, like if maybe it's only on the outside because it seems it's not like you can see the thing all the way across. It's only on the outside, which is maybe just where you would see it, I guess. But kind of curious to try and just turn this down a little bit more. See if that fixes it. But it is pretty cool looking. I mean, there's a little line. It's not the worst thing ever, but it just kind of depends. Let me get the camera over, over here where I can kind of show you guys what's going on. This thing does look cool. There's definitely, definitely a line in there. When you're looking down from kind of the top, let's see if I can get this to work right. Just show you guys. So it looks cool though, like from the total top, look at that, that's pretty sweet. Then when you come around, see, there it is. See that? But then it goes away at like a certain point <laughs> when you're looking up. I don't know. Let's put it back on the lathe and see if we can I don't know. I'm just curious if, if you turn it down thinner, if for some reason that line is only on the outside for some reason. I don't know. 
I just don't know. Don't really have a lot of room. But. Even if we turn into it, it's not a big deal. This is kind of just a test. Really need to wax my lathe bed there. So let's see what you guys think. We'll just throw it back up there real, yeah, it's pretty tough to see, but it's not, uh, I don't know of any way to fix that line. If it's in the blank, I think you're kind of screwed, <laughs> but I don't know. Um, grilling out the I'm trying to make sure. Yeah, I haven't tried it myself, but um, some people have used fishing line, and it's. Pr but I think that you kind of have the same problem. Like it, it's it's like that, like that witness line, um, but it'll just be on top, so you can see, you know like I, I don't think that it's like totally obvious, but I think you can see it with fishing line. And that's why I'd rather, you don't really want to do that. Let's try and turn it away a little bit and just see what happens. I don't think it's going to fix it, but you know, you never know. Let me stop this thing real quick. So the line I think is right. Are you guys just looking at it? Yeah, okay. The line is right here. Kind of right about two thirds of the way down the die. So let's let's just cut into it a little bit and see what ends up happening. Nope, I can actually, I'm pretty sure I can still see it. Get off of there, shavings. Yeah, pretty sure you can still see it. Hmm. Yep, it's still there. So, that's kind of a bummer, guys. Kind of a bummer. Tell you what, what I'm gonna do is I think I'm gonna let this thing cure more and just see if that changes anything. I'm gonna put it aside, uh, let it kind of cure up a little bit more, see if that does anything to the, to the mixture, to the, <laughs> to the line that's there. And then we'll come back and look at it and, and kind of see. Uh, the other thing that I have though, like I said, I, I have the, the other one, let's see here. That one, yeah. The bolt that I made, the other one that I made here, um, the bolt was done, I did this the same time that I did that one. Um, that's alumilite, and I'm kind of curious. I want to turn that, I don't have time today, but I want to turn this one and see if that line is there, because this is one where 
uh, using Illumilite Clear Slow Set, I pulled it out of the pressure pot after two hours, poured the second layer, and then it was good to go. So um, we got a couple more to test. Like I said, I, I'm, I want to see how this works out because I, I haven't noticed that before uh, in, in any of the ones that I've done. So we'll have to see. I have more of an eye looking at these things, though, right now because I have some stuff um, that I, I have a few blanks. And if I can't get rid of the witness line, I'm probably going to have to tell the client, sorry. Oh, there's John's right there. <laughs> uh, sorry, John. Yeah. So I don't know if we can't get rid of this witness line, if I can't do it, I don't think that I would want me to do these blanks for you. So, uh, we'll have to try a few more things. I'll see what I can do, but, uh, yeah, I don't know. These things are kind of tough. Sometimes, like I said, you got to just practice and try things out until you figure out either the solution or just throw in, throw in the towel and say, you know what, it's not possible or I can't do it personally uh, and see if somebody else can. So anyway, I hope you guys had fun tonight. Sarah, what's up? Thanks for joining the stream. Uh, I hope you had fun tonight seeing what's going on. Like I said, if, if the witness line issue isn't a big deal, uh, we'll have to kind of see what, what the Illumilite ones turn out like. But it is pretty minute. I mean, you you know, you could get away with it. It's up to you um, whether or not that's that's like a deal breaker kind of thing. Um, but personally, I wouldn't want that. It's not something that I would want in my blanks or the, the finished things. So hopefully the, the Illumilite ones will turn out a little bit better. Um, and like we were saying, I was trying to get to it where it was kind of at that gel state. If you can get it where you know, the, the two pores are really curing together into one solid layer, then you don't have to worry about it. Um, so maybe, you know, you, for super, super heavy things, maybe it's just not really possible. I don't know. Um, or, you know, maybe you just have to kind of wait with a slow setting resin to the right time, uh, but not jiggle it around or do much. So We'll, we'll, we'll be looking into a little bit more of this and trying to make sure we can, we've exhausted every possible, you know, way of doing this to get it done right. But if anybody has any ideas on that, especially uh, for people that watch the, the replay, I'm definitely going to put this one up as a replay. Um, if anybody has any ideas or thoughts, definitely leave those down in the comments. I know you guys are kind of commenting right now, but uh, anyway, I hope you guys had fun. I hope you guys have a really happy, safe, fun Easter uh, if you're traveling safe and all that stuff uh let's see here so next week we'll probably do some i'm probably not going to do this next week i might revisit it if we've you know kind of if i've found out anything i'll definitely cover it uh we might do something different though because uh, you know we want to we want to keep it fresh around here and do some fun stuff so anyway guys i hope you all have a wonderful evening have a great weekend like i said happy easter to everybody Thanks for joining the fun, and thank you to JP Woodwork, Mr. Jamie Page, for the super chat. I really appreciate it. Uh, shipping my boxes of blanks to the UK. Oh, <laughs> yes, there are definitely some blanks in there for you. So I can't wait to share the blanks and see what everybody makes with those things that we sent over there uh, at the Easy Wood Tools factory or wherever they, wherever it is, getting loaded onto their little pallet skid thing. So it'll be. Uh, there'll be uh, all those blanks that I made for for the Maker Central event are going to be at the Easy Wood Tools booth. Some of them are for me to turn, and the rest are for other people. So it'll be kind of fun to see who who gets what and and what everybody makes with them. So anyway, guys, I hope you have a wonderful night. I will see you next Friday, 3 p.m. Pacific time, and uh, Sunday this Sunday. Uh, I know everybody's probably going to be kind of busy with Easter and all, you know whatever's going on, but. I will be posting my video of the dragon egg stand. I redid the stand on it. So I got the video up uh, and it'll be ready to go on Sunday morning. So I will see you guys all next Friday. Have a great night and I will see you then.